when the trial began. This was a big major event, so it was a real circus. The prosecution, their entire case was the tape. R. Kelly and an underage girl having sex. They turned down the lights and they put it on and it was, it was grim. I could hear things, but to see it visually and for her to be so young, My oldest brother did get on the stand, and he said that it wasn't her. It wasn't my niece on the tape. Before the verdict came down, I saw Sam Adam Jr., who was sitting next to R. Kelly, turn to him and say, we did everything we could. And the mood in the room was very much that he was about to be a condemned man. The series everyone is talking about. Music made him an icon, but behind closed doors made him a monster. We're talking about R. Kelly and the Lifetime series Surviving R. Kelly. In today's video, we go over the damning, heartbreaking telling documentary they just did last week. And if Lifetime wants to keep the discussion going, they can make a numerous amount of these documentaries with not just R. Kelly. They can do them based on Harvey Weinstein, the current occupant of the White House, Kevin Spacey, Bill Cosby, the Catholic Church, and so many others that have engaged in less than scrupulous, nefarious behaviors if they want to keep getting ratings. I would like to also shout out, before we get into the video, a YouTuber named Tasha K, who dropped a whole lot of information about this type of thing back when high scrutiny was going on, when people didn't even know these type of activity was going on with R. Kelly. And another shout out to my high school classmate, Tiffany, who requested this video, and she wanted me to mention, get the hashtag going, you too, which means if you sympathize and plan to continue to support a child predator and a serial child rapist, you too are sick. And also, if you have no sense of self-worth, and still want to lay down with this man after he's done all this just because you want to get money, fame, power, and celebrity, you two are the problem. Let's dive into the video. What's good, you two? You're in the building with the all knowing, all loving, all feeling, all seeing, all powerful. Just damn all everything, and I really don't want to say sex is hell because after seeing that documentary, my mind has been so far away from sex, you might as well say I'm in the Grand Canyon somewhere underneath one of the canyons because I just, the word just behooves me at this moment. This is the Life Games channel. I'm your life coach. We review everything on this channel, whether it's movies, TV shows, tech, apps, whatever. We review it, and this is a heavy subject to review. And as my grandma once told me, the brighter the picture, the darker the negative. And that certainly pertains to Robert Kelly. And this documentary is a series that goes through the very beginning to what they have caught up with nowadays in talking about his behaviors outside of music. And what happens is they start with what went on with Aaliyah? Now, if you're not into the industry, you hear this stuff, it's easy for you to start thinking conspiracy theories. And a lot of us brushed it off back in the day because we loved R. Kelly, you loved his music. You didn't have any idea what to believe in terms of what's going on behind the scenes. This documentary does a great job of breaking it down. And let me warn you, if you have children, right, this documentary is gritty, rated PG, but at the same time, for an impressionable mind, this documentary is gonna be an excellent tool for you sitting down with them, teaching them how to make better decisions, which I think is probably the ultimate goal of the documentary. But throughout the documentary, they channel, you know, R. Kelly profiling underage girls from Aaliyah to people he's dealing with now, to him going after women that probably have some emotional baggage, some mental damage, that type of thing, to fully putting them into what we're calling and what people are calling 
a household cult where he's got a woman in each single room basically telling them what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and where they should do it. How he got to that point, the handlers that surrounded him, the court case, the sex tape. Y'all might remember Dave Chappelle popping up with the all that they go in depth with all that to try to give you a better understanding of the gravity of what's going on with r kelly and why me too is asking for r kelly to be banned from radio stations um, he's already been kicked off spotify and pandora because they all see a monster within now i'm watching this documentary with my wife and the part that hurt me the most there was one girl he grabbed named dominique gardner and she was a beautiful young lady, got her young, got her into his whole little cabal. And throughout the time of this cabal, he transformed this girl from beautiful little girl to basically a male. Now, I don't know if she already had a predilection that she might want to, you know, be a cross dresser, be a boy or whatever, but I would definitely say that R. Kelly helped attribute to that. And this section right here just did it for me if you look at her face her eyes they're glazed though as if she's on drugs as if she's in deep space as if there's no hope for her that is the kind of hold that they show you that he has put on a lot of these people that have gone into this event with him to me what this highlights is that r kelly yes he is the cancer he's the cancer to a whole systemic problem R. Kelly is the pure monster, the biggest culprit in this situation because he profiled young girls, he attracted young girls, and he actively went after them as a grown-ass adult. Even though these girls voluntarily went to R. Kelly, all the ones that were underage in their states, the culpability completely falls on R. Kelly because he's the adult. You can't be going after girls that are underage when you are supposed to be the adult in the situation. But there's other links, there's other systemic issues to this problem. Even after some of this knowledge came out that R. Kelly was doing these behaviors, there was adult women with adult minds still pursuing R. Kelly as if they hadn't heard or seen these rumors and culpability had to be put somewhat on them the ones that stuck around and tolerated this kind of behavior because they had a choice that they could have made from the very beginning. There was one young lady who made it known she was a full adult. She had heard about the stuff R. Kelly was doing and she still made the choice to go after R. Kelly and be with him. This brings up a bigger question. When someone of power tells you to do something that completely makes you uncomfortable in order to maybe be next to the power or they're telling you they're gonna advance your career and you're an adult. That is a decision that you can make to leave the premises. You do not have to subject yourself to that type of stuff, knowing that it's wrong, knowing that it's uncomfortable, know he shouldn't be doing it, but that is one opportunity you have to exercise your power to make a choice to not deal with that stuff if you don't want to. Because a lot of these women just said yes when he asked them to do sexual favors up front. They just said, yes, I'm going to do it. They did it. And now they're caught up. They pretty much have got Stockholm Syndrome. He's beat up their emotion. He's beat up their mentality. He's beat up their resolve and self-worth. They don't even believe in themselves to the point they can't leave him. But if they possibly would have said, no, I'm not going to do that and walked out the door, they might not would have been in that situation. Next, we've got to talk about the parents that still let their kids deal with R. Kelly even after knowing these allegations, even after him going through a pedophile trial. There were some parents that still allowed their children to go be and hang around R. Kelly. Some responsibility has got to be put on them because the, the behavior had already been put present and you still felt the need to allow your child to hang around this man. There's no level of mentoring that most parents are gonna allow their children to go hang with this guy unless they're thirst trapping, unless they're trying to get a financial come up out of it. And these parents still let some of their kids go hang with R. Kelly. You have to hold them somewhat responsible 
for going into the situation. Now we do know that kids and teenagers in particular, when they get in their mind they're gonna do something, you could have been a great parent, raised them right, you could put them on punishment, but you know some people will sneak out their window to do what they wanna do, sneak out your home, maybe even plan to run away. But at the end of the day, as a parent, you have to know that you did all you could do to prevent your child from being put in that step, in that situation. Even if it means you put their ass in your house, in their bedroom, under lock and key and say, no, you're not gonna be dealing with R. Kelly. Next, some culpability has to be put on the handlers of R. Kelly, the yes men in his life, the yes people that still stayed there, seen this behavior, acted like it was cool, allowed it to keep going because they wanted to keep getting a paycheck for R. Kelly. They get some responsibility too because there was opportunities they could have stepped in, checked R. Kelly, even called the police if they wanted to, to make sure that people don't keep getting hurt as they go down the line of this path with R. Kelly. My next point, if you're wondering why men of power or people of power haven't come forth in the past to talk about these issues, you have to know that probably in some circles, there are people of power that love talking about how they dangle their power, their extension to getting someone to come up in their face with sexual favors, with deviancy, with all kinds of stuff, and they enjoy doing that. A lot of people behind the scenes knew about this stuff, in particular men, and they ain't say nothing. Didn't do nothing, didn't speak out, didn't go against them, because they talk about this stuff. A lot of people with power talk about the different the different attributes they get with having all that power that the average person don't get. I mean, let's just take a look at folks that are sick of fence following people who are doing such things right now. You can't figure out why they're still following them. So that's probably why you didn't see a lot of other powerful people in those positions come out and say anything else. Which brings me to my next point. People have said that to question some of the people that got involved with our Kelly, you're victim blaming. I tend to call it an education session. Let's question what the victim did to could have prevent the situation. Because we have a situation here where you have a person of power. How do you control that person of power when there's no law to get him in trouble? He's not doing anything illegal. He's doing immoral, unethical, bad things. And he still got his income stream coming in. How do you control him when you have this entity versus some young entity or some entity who's broken, doesn't have money, bad finance, and they meet him at the crossroads? The power at that point is on this entity that doesn't have any of those things that R. Kelly has. You have the power at that moment to say, you know what, Mr. Kelly, I have more self worth that I'm not going to perform a sexual act on you. I'm not going to do something that makes me uncomfortable with you. I'm not going to do any of those things because I feel like you can give me some comeuppancy, you can increase my finances, or you can help me out. That's when you have to exercise power. We also need to shift this narrative in America that money, fame are the most wholesome, best things that anyone can have, especially tantalizing the youth in America. And it doesn't matter if you've got good parents, two parents household, they're teaching you to do these things. Probably pop culture, TV, internet has a greater hold on your children when they become teens, regardless of the upbringing you put into them. But you still have to be teaching them that there are greater things, loving self, self-worth, having dignity, being able to make money or being able to earn fame on the terms you wanna earn them that are better than subjecting yourself to what someone in power is telling you to do. Finally, in closing, this man made great music and this is gonna be an ongoing subject of debate. Can you separate his good art from him? So you do have people that still want to listen to R. Kelly's music, but they don't wanna support him. And then you have people that are saying, you shouldn't listen to his music, you should erase his legacy, you should just get rid of him all together. So my question and call to action to you on YouTube, is there a way that you can still enjoy his artwork and separate him from it without supporting him? I know my folks out there that's using those pirate services are doing that. They're listening to his music and giving a damn about him. But I wanna know what you guys know on the whole entire situation. Let me know what you think. Did you see the documentary? 
Do you want to see them make more documentaries? Keep the questions coming. Let's keep the conversation going because it's very sad. That whole thing had me bothered, man, literally bothered. But we can also use this as an opportunity for education. And that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video. Please comment and subscribe and share. Go get yourself a life game. Get that hashtag going. You too. And until the next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you.